This conference will now be recorded. Very good evening to all. Uh, am I audible to you? So please respond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine, fine. So actually, this is a uh, continuation for last day session. So first, uh, log into our console and check our region, right? So previously, we are uh, we are done a uh, few concepts on AWS. The first one is VPC, and the second one is instance creation. So those two services uh, on North Virginia. First, to check our region. So actually, we are in US East North Virginia, right? And then click on services. So this is the continuation for yesterday's session. Okay, and then click on services. First, I open Notepad. So am I audible to everyone? Yeah, so we already done uh, one instance. That instance name is web server. This is our instance ID and our instance status is running. Okay, so before um, doing any deployments on your instance, you check two things on EC2. The first one is instance state and second one is status check. So the status check is Two by two check pass. That means two by two is nothing but so this is the status check option. Now I click on status checks. So here two type of checks are there. One is system status check and second one is instance status check. So system status check is nothing but it will check all hardware com uh, hardware requirements on our instance web server instance. Instance status check is nothing but it will check only network configuration. Okay, so without uh, without uh, one without one any one check we we can't uh, edit or we can't deploy any project on EC2 instance. So the status check is must be in two by two check pass. Without two, two by two we can't do anything on this particular web server instance. So you please check instance state and status checks before doing any project. Okay. So now I need to create two more instances by clicking on launch instance button. So this is the button I click on launch instance. So yesterday we already chosen one uh, EMI. So that is nothing but Amazon mission image. So the mission, the image name is Ubuntu server 20.04. So this is the latest one. That's what we're selecting this one. Okay. So the type is 64 bit a arm template and click on select. So choose an instance type. So now we always prefer free tier service. That's what I'm selecting T4G micro. So T4G micro is the free tier available service. So there they will provide two virtual CPUs and one GB of memory. So the next configure instance details. So network is our network. We already created one uh, VPC. That VPC name is project underscore VPC. Now I select our own VPC. 
so then subnet is one year so previously in, in previous lab we are selecting only one subnet okay sexually our requirement is sexually our requirement is create three instances in three different subnets or same subnet now we do this process so the process is same subnets that's what i am selecting same subnet again okay so no need to change anything in this tab and click on add storage button so this is the default volume so 8 gb is enough for open to operating operating system so if you want to more space you can allocate here so 10 20 or something so 8 gb is enough for open to operating system so the next add tags so click to add in name tag so the name this is a uh, identification name for our instance so this instance name is this instance name is db server so this name so now i copy this name and paste it on value location so our instance name is our second instance name is db underscore server db server and click on configure security so we already created one on security group in previous session that's what i'm selecting select an existing security group so our existing our own security group is this one so that group name is security group name is project underscore sg so in this security group we have two ports so one is http second one is ssh and third one is https so this first http is for ipv4 address and this for ipv6 so this is the default operating system port number okay so this is for ipv4 and this is for ipv6 okay so now i choose an existing security group that security group name is project underscore sg okay and then click on review and launch again click on launch we already created one key pair in previous so so that i am selecting that key pair that key pair name is final underscore project okay so this is our key pair now i choose existing key pair and then click on i acknowledge button after that click on launch instance we already done two instances in north virginia right we need to create one more instance so again click on view instances so we already done two instances the first instance name is web iphone server and second instance name is db and underscore server we need to create one more instance again click on launch instance so choose same emi so ubuntu so the server is ubuntu 20.04 the type is 64 bit arm template so as usual t244g micro configure network is project underscore vpc subnet is uh, project underscore sub one no need to change anything and then click on next add stories so it gb is enough add tags so now i click on click to add a name tag in middle of the screen so this our name is redis 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 is nothing but in memory catchy catchy server in memory dead the next click on configure right is yeah so the next click on configure security choose an existing security so the existing security group name is project underscore sg and click on review and launch choose an existing that existing key pair name is final underscore project and launch instance so your instance or now launching state it will take some time to launch this instance again scroll down to a little bit and and then click on view instances on right bottom of the screen now um, we are done uh, three instances so the first one is web iphone server second one is uh, db underscore server and third one is the last one is redis okay
so this is the second step so we already done second step then third step is the third step is open uh, database server on putty so we already downloaded one key pair that key pair is in desktop right so first uh, check that key pair whether it is there or not actually our key pair name is so actually our key name is this one final underscore key project okay so that key is in downloads i think so now i click on downloads yeah so this is the this is our secure secure key so actually this secure key extension is dot pem pem is nothing but privacy enhanced mail putty cannot understand pem files right so that's what we are converting this P, pem file to ppk by using some third party tools so the tools are available in putty.org website p.org and enter actually this is the this is our link so download putty you can download putty here you just click on here link so this is the link now i click on this link in this link we have so many tools are there but our required tool name is putty.exe so that uh, that the tool is available in alternative binary file section so now i download putty.exe and second one is puttygen.exe so that is in, this is the second one puttygen puttygen.exe okay so actually uh, here we have uh, three type of versions are there one is a 64 bit x86 is there 64 bit arm template is there 32 bit x86 is there so now i select 64 64 bit x86 why because so my 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 pc uh, my my pc version bit, bit version is 64 bit x86 so this is not our instance okay so this is our local pc configuration that's what i am selecting based on your laptop requirement you can download okay so my laptop uh, bit version is 64 bit x86 that's what i am downloading 60 64 bit x86 for suppose your laptop uh, operating system bit version is 32 you just download this one 32 bit x86 okay based on your six system requirement you can download okay my system uh, requirement is 60 64 bit x86 that's what i'm clicking on this link yeah so the put is downloaded successfully so the next download one more so one more tool the tool name is puttygen.exe puttygen puttygen.exe and bit version is 64 bit x86 click on this so both uh, tools are downloaded successfully right so now first i open puttygen.exe so by using this puttygen we will convert .pem to ppk files okay so here so many buttons are there generate load save public and save private key is there so now our required uh, button is load you, if you, you you don't have any key you just click on generate we already downloaded one key that key is in desk downloads that's what i'm selecting load button load so downloads so here uh, we don't have any file so why because the file format is only ppk it displays only ppk so so that we will change this uh, ppk to all files yeah so now it is visible final dot project final underscore project so now i select final underscore project dot pem click on open successfully imported foreign key so actually that is the private key so we are successfully importing our private key on putty gen tool right yes sir we are using novactam sir in place of putty sorry yeah yeah you can you using novactam sir because you are not there is no cost of converting this ppk file. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Not an issue. So this is, uh, putty is uh, very, very easy when similar compared to another tools. That's what we are explaining these things. Okay. 
successfully ah, imported okay. for so we are uh, we are success, successfully importing our um, our pem key and then click on ok so the next here we have on two buttons are there one is save public and second one is save private key actually our pem file is private key so that's what i am selecting save for private key so public key is in aws uh, under uh, so private key is in our 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 own okay so save private key. are you sure you want to save this key without a pass place to protect it here can't provide any authentication passwords so that's what we are getting this type of error no need to assign anything so don't worry yes so our key is uh, successfully converted dot pem to ppk so now save this key on desktop now i select a desktop so now this file name is final underscore project one m is final underscore project ppk is final underscore project one so the save as type as is dot ppk so this file is in desktop okay and click on save button so the next close this putigen so putigen is, is is only used for key conversion okay so now check whether it is downloaded or not yeah so this is the so this is our key final underscore project one dot ppt okay again again i open one more tool the tool name is putty dot exe so this is our putty tool so with it is just like a terminal without terminal we can't do anything on it, on our instance so that i am downloading putty so putty is nothing but it is one type of linux terminal okay so the next uh, here they will ask some uh, some fields the first field is host name or ip address host name or ip address is nothing but our instance dns name or our instance dns name or public ip before address host name is nothing but okay first back to my instance So back to my instance and select Redis. So now I select Redis first. So this is our instance IPv4 public key. So 54.145.201 and 136. So you can copy this address and again back to putty and paste it on host name location. So actually our default port number is 22 why because this is linux operating system okay so no need to change any any port so this is the default port number so in category we have one option is this, that option name called ssh so secure shell elaborate this option by clicking on plus symbol so in ssh we have so many options key host keys uh, cipher authentication and everything so now i select authentication auth which is an authentication or in right side of the screen we have one button the button called browse so now i click on browse we already uh, converted one key so that key is in desktop desktop and my key name is final yeah so this is the key final underscore project one dot ppk okay open and again yeah wait a minute and in, in windows we have um, one option that option name is appearance so now i click on change in left uh, right side of the screen so font uh, is courier new font style is bold font size is 40 14 or 16 okay open yes accept so now login as they will ask uh, some username so actually we are using ubuntu right so username also ubuntu so authenticating with public key so the public key is our final underscore project so we are successfully logged into our ubuntu server in putty okay again clear my screen by using clear command 
actually we are we are in ubuntu user right so this is the username and this is our private ip so this is our instance private ip actually our instance is in private network so the, so that it will display they will display this type of ip address actually this is our private ip okay so now i convert into root user so here we have one command is this the command name is sudo space su space iphone yes now we are in root user okay so actually we have uh, many many users so by default we have only two users one is ubuntu and second one is root if you want to do any modification on your instance you can do only root mode so that i am using root by using sudo space su space hyphen command okay so again here we have some documentation links are there this is, this is the redis installation link now i copy that link and paste it on chats so all of you copy that link already pasted uh, that link on chat so please refer that okay so this is the definition for redis redis is uh, is an in memory data structure store so this is the in memory data store okay so in memory data store is nothing but used as a distributed in memory key value database so that is nothing but catchy database so catchy database and in the one to number sometimes so now i take one more tab so take in incognito so gmail.com so in gmail they will ask username and password so now i type my own username and click on next so now uh, they will uh, ask some password, right? So the password in the data and a user your password ni manam catch you store chile do. Once we catch you store chest, just username each next click chega ni mot manki automatic login out and the involvement of advantage in the manam work in speed up chess code and possibility in the okay so redis redis is nothing but in memory storage in memory catchy storage catchy and manam edaina oka information ichina appudu first time e dani store cheskuntundi next time malli manam adhe information get cheyali anukunte web server to application application to database database to application application to web server so actually this is the three tier architecture and the man which in information is three tier architecture and each user name on the user name on the three tier architecture and base is going to work a while okay and they allow to me web server low each information application server low check just going application in g database low man man each in a user name won't take password with me later on day this user does not exist at first right so ila and already one user ni manam direct ga thoraga login cheyalante ee users ni manam already sometimes catch lo store chesukochu ela so once meer password enter cheyagane ikkada do you want to save this key yes or no an adugutundi me right top corner lo ikkada meer yes ani click chesthe em avutundi in next next minute nundi aa values anni manaki direct ga login avuthi okay so wait a minute Thank you. 
okay uh, so that is the main advantage of redis cluster so redis cluster valla manaku advantage entante mana work ni speed up cheyadam kosam mana redis ane oka catch service so in memory catch storage service catch storage service ni mana web application kosam use chestunnam right so id enduku ante only speed up so mana web application performance high heavy ga undadam kosam redis ane oka instance ni launch cheyabothundi okay so ee redis ane instance launch cheyalante we need uh, some procedure that procedure is available in this particular link okay now i copy that link and paste it on new tabs so how to install uh, and secure uh, redis on ubuntu 18.04 at 20.04 it, it will work on both versions 18.04 and 20.04 right so first uh, update our instance so again back to my putty so actually we are in root user now update this instance by using sudo space sudo space apt iphone get space update and enter so now our instance is updating state so yeah so done the uh, reading package is listed done that that is that is nothing but our instance is successfully updated okay so again clear so the next command is so this is the introduction for redis and prerequisites for redis so the next one is installation and configuring configuring redis we already done uh, update command the second command is um, installation command so now to install redis server so this is the command sudo apt get install redis iphone server now i copy this rightly so the command is sudo apt get install redis iphon server okay so and click on enter yeah so do you want to continue yes yes or no so if you want to continue you just uh, enter y in your keyboard otherwise n y and enter So the status is process progress in progress so it will take around 30 seconds yeah done so the next command is so open this file with your preferred text editor now i open this file actually our redis configuration is available this particular path so sudo sudo is a uh, root user permission nano is the editor so actually this redis underscore server uh, configuration file is available in slash etc slash redis and that particular file name is redis underscore config so now i open this file with nano editor so the editor name is nano so in linux we have so many editors vi is there vim is there and nano is there so most of the users are using only nano why because this is very easy when compared to vim vim okay now i copy this and right click so this is the redis configuration this file is in this particular directory so the directory is etc redis and that file name is redis underscore config okay so this is the entire uh, configuration about redis cluster so the next step is the next step is instead of the file find the supervised directory so supervised directory so now control w is the search option in nano editor control w is the search option so per supervisor system d now i search control w system d
so here we have so many system d's are there again control w and such this thing supervised enter control w yeah so this is the this is that one supervised so is no so instead of the file find the supervised directory this directory allows you to declare an init system to manage redis as a service providing you with more control over its operation the supervised directory is set to no so by default the supervised uh, is directory is set to no yes so this is uh, here we have no option okay so by default since you are running ubuntu now we are using ubuntu operating system so which user which uses the system d in its system change this to system d so now i change this no to system d now i copy this system d this is the system configuration and right click so done so that is done okay so the next save this file so save means control x first control x is nothing but exit so then they will ask save modified buffer do you want to save this file you can say if you want to save this file you just enter y in your keyboard otherwise n so y and again click on enter button on my keyboard so the file is successfully saved okay and next command is sudo system control release ready restart ready service we just now we may, we made some change on that file so the so the we can use this command so this is the restart command now i copy this and right click sudo system control restart redis dot service so now successfully restarted our redis configuration okay so the next testing redis so whether it is working or not so by using this command so the command is sudo system control status redis so now to check the status of redis first clear my screen by using clear command and right click yeah so the status is active active is nothing but it is uh, working successfully okay so it is working successfully and then click and then select control z control z is nothing but exit from this status mode okay so the next command is <laughs> Check the status. Uh, open uh, Redis CLI. So CLI is nothing but command line interface. So now I copy. Yeah. So presently we are in uh, Redis CLI. So previously we are in root user. Now we are in Redis command line interface. Okay. So now we are in Redis interface. Previously we are in Ubuntu in Ubuntu root interface. Okay so now check whether it is working or not so by using ping so if you type ping and enter so pong ping pong so the output is pong so the next one is set test it's working copy right okay okay is nothing but it is working fine okay so the next get test yeah so it's working git test is nothing but set test so we already uh, set up one uh, one message the message is it's working so now i get that test value by using this command get test so the output is it's working okay redis cluster anedi perfect ga work avutunda ledha anedi check cheyadam kosam ee basic some nominal things and you okay so control z or control x control c sorry control c control c is nothing but exit from redis cli so this is the redis configuration otherwise we can use exit exit command 
okay and so again again re restart the redis so the command is sudo sudo system control restart redis so now we are done redis configuration successfully okay so the next thing is we are already done redis configuration on my project so the next next thing is create a database on db server create a database on db server so how to create that database first select db server first i select db server on my AWS dashboard and copy that instance ipv4 public ip so this is our db instance ip address the next uh, take a new putty so this is putty gen so take a new putty host name means or uh, db server public ip collaborate the ssh authentications and browse our ppk our ppk is in desktop and ppk name is final underscore project one dot ppk and open so the next appearance change world 16 okay the next colors use the system colors, uh, colors. so default for the zero open yes so now i log in as ubuntu so in the db also we are using ubuntu server no supported authentication methods available wait a minute again i open 40 yeah so we are getting error why because so the status check is initializing it will take some time so again i refresh this console yeah so now the check status is too bad to check past again i copy that instance ipv4 public ip and take a new putty ssh authentications browse so that key is in desktop and key name is final underscore project one dot ppk appearance change 16 mole okay the next colors so now open unable to load key for it key format to new open to an enter no supported authentication methods available servers in public key so now i check that key key first yeah our key name is final underscore project so that is fine yeah so actually we are getting error why because so actually in db we are using in database we are using the security group so the security group name is project underscore sg right so now i have opened that security group so that security group is in ac2 dashboard we just scroll down to little bit on ac2 dashboard so in this dashboard we have one option that option name is called network and security in network and security we have security groups now i select security groups so here um, our own security group is there that security group name is project underscore sg so that is our own security group okay so now i open the security select that one so in below we have um, four options details inbound outbound and tags so now i click on inbound road so scroll down a little bit and click on edit inbound rules and click on edit inbound rules actually we have only two inbound rules the first one is so in this security group we have only two inbounds the first one is https second one is http and third one is ssh ssh is the default one okay 
so now we want to add two more rows so one for redis and another one for data case so database have to maintain their own port number so database port number is 3306 i think yeah so this is the database port number okay so ide security group ni enduku change chestunnu anu ante nenu so ide security group ni three instances ki allocate chesanu so that i am changing this security group only okay again click on add rule the rule type is custom tcp so the rule type is custom tcp and database port number is 303306 so that is the db port number and source is custom so the target uh, id is our inst and our vpc id vpc id is 10.0.0.0 slash 16 okay so meeku inkoka doubt raavochandi ikkada emi previous ikkada manam anni zeros nunchi chesamu ikkada 10000/16 ani enduku ichcham ani meeku oka doubt raavu endukante database is the secure service redis is the secure service so database and redis both are secure services on our deployment on aws okay so that i am choosing this ip this ip is nothing but this is the private network okay and the e range lo evaraithe unnaru ee range lo unnaru ante vaallu aa company ki sambandhinchina vyaktulu ayi undali vaallu maatrame mana database ni access cheyadaniki possibility database is nothing but 3306 port ni access cheyagalaru ala kaakunda meeru 0000/0 ani isthe emavutundi ante mee website ni global ga prathi okkaru ante mee website ni evaraithe browse chestunnaro prathi okkaru mee database lo this is a value in the database. Ni copy so, that is the security threat. Right? So, security threat is to protect the custom and, and then IP address is 10.0.0.16. So, that is our own network IP address. That's what we are selecting that type of IP only. Okay? So, that is the database port 3306 now i add one more rule so that is for redis okay so the redis port number is 6379 so please note it down 6379 6379 is a redis port number 6379 so the source is custom and uh, custom ip is 10 decimal 0 decimal 0 decimal 0 slash 16 okay 10 decimal 0 decimal 0 decimal 0 slash 16 and click on save rule. so that's fine so we have now we have five rules one is https second one is http third one is ssh and fourth one is double three zero six that is nothing but db and fourth, fifth one is 6379 that is for redis cluster okay so the next click on if you want to delete any security any port number you just click on delete button it is simple so the next click on save rules so now i check outbound so by default outbound is uh, outbound is allowed all traffic yeah so this one all traffic so no need to change these things okay all traffic is nothing but an uh, outbound so they will allow any type of traffic so the, that is not an issue okay so again back to ec2 dashboard so this is uh, instance running tab so here we have three instances are there for the next open db first i refresh my console I copy this and take a new new putty new session control V SSH authentications browse key name is final underscore project one open okay 
Yeah. So now login as login as Ubuntu. So this window is right, this window and this one is DB window. Okay. So change settings appearance change world 16. Okay. The next colors. Zero apply. So previously we are getting error. Why? Because so we are uh, not enabling double three zero six four. That's why we are getting that type of error. So here uh, white color font is reddish cluster. Uh, yellow color font is DB terminal. So by default we are in Ubuntu user now convert into root by using sudo space su space hyphen. So at present we are in root user. So we next clear my screen by using clear. Okay. So mm, the actually just now we created DB instance. So here we don't have any DB configuration. So first we do that configuration. Okay. So here we have one link is there. So there is the yeah, so this is the MySQL creation link. Now I copy this and paste it on chat box. So please copy that link. So this is the link. Okay. So now I copy this and take a new browser window, paste it on URL box. So how to allow remote access to MySQL? So this is the overall configuration. So actually our requirement is DB create. So there is DB create command. Yeah, so this one. So first install MySQL. So first check back to my console. So first update our instance by using sudo space apt update enter. So now our DB is updating. So the next uh, Check this console whether uh, the DB instance is created or not. So the command is mysql space hyphen u space root and enter. So here we don't have any mysql terminal. Command mysql not found but can be installed with below commands. So those two are uh, mysql installation commands. Okay. So now I install MySQL first. So the command is sudo apt install mysql hyphen server. Actually, our environment is server environment. So that I am installing MySQL server. Okay. So the next click on enter. So do you want to continue? Yes. I want to continue this. Yes. So it is under uh, progress. So the next create one user. So cre create one user and set the password for uh, that particular user. Okay. So the command is uh, here. The command is the create where is create. And so this is the command. So create. Now I copy this and paste it on Notepad. So 
create user now i modify this one to create a user the username is admin so by default the username is admin so now the db username is admin actually this is database user creation command so the username is admin so at the rate remote server ip address that, that, that means our database private ip otherwise you can choose percentage symbol percentage symbol is the man came out and then an accept just particular gaman of a particular server and access you can percentage each coach okay so it in single quotes admin at the rate percentage and percentile and identified by password so set password for our db username our username is admin and password is password is admin at the rate one two three our db username is admin and admin password is admin at the rate one two three okay so user create the command is user create user space within the single quotes admin admin is the username at the rate in the uh, single quotes percentile symbol space identified by that particular user password that particular user password is admin at the rate one two three okay and copy this copy this command control c again back to put it clear and right click to create user admin identified by the particular user password enter command not phone so command not phone and C R E A T E create is okay create user admin is okay at the rate is okay percentage is okay identified by he also okay password ram and one two three okay now try this now i try this oh sorry sorry so actually we are in root user now to now move on to uh, mysql so by using this command mysql space iphone view space root and enter yeah so now we are in sql form now try this command admin now i copy this right click and yeah q okay zero rows affected that means it is working fine okay so the first command is working so the next one is the next command is we already created user that's fine so the next command is this one grant permissions for that particular user this is the command a user to particular permissions provide shells the permissions are create alter drop insert update delete select reference reload and okay table ni drop cheyalanna alter cheyalanna insert cheyalanna update cheyalanna table lo una fields select cheyalanna delete cheyalanna gaani aa vaatannitiki some permissions kavali so aa permissions evarante manam em cheyali grant command ni run cheyali right so ela అన్ని టైప్ చేసుకున్నా నేను ఏం చేస్తానంటే గ్రాండ్ ఆల్ ప్రివిలేజెస్ అని ఇస్తాను చూడండి ఆల్ మీన్స్ ఇట్ ఎలోస్ ఆల్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ వాల్యూస్ ప్రివిలేజెస్ ఆల్ ప్రివిలేజెస్ ఆన్ actually this is the uh, db name no grant all privileges on um, intent 3 so intent 3 is the database name right intent 3 
डॉट स्टार टाइम so we are not using any ip address so i am changing that value so this is the command so grant all privileges on intent3 intent3 is nothing but intent3 is the database name admin is the database username okay so intent3 dot star so dot star is nothing but it it delivers any type of extensions to our particular username our username is admin at rate percent So percentile is nothing but that is the our DB instance private IP address. So now I copy this and write it here. Enter. Yeah. So Q okay zero rows affected. So that means this command also working fine. Okay. So the next command is so following uh, this it's good uh, practice to run the plus. privileges command this will be free up any memory that the server catch as a result of the preceding create user and grant statements i have already uh, created created uh, one user and grant privileges so the next run this command so the command is flush privileges q is working okay, zero rows effect okay So this is this is also working fine. So the next command is exit. Exit is nothing but exit for MySQL terminal. Okay. So BG. So BG is nothing but background check. And the in the background, if there are no there are no in the layer check check, then cause some BG order. FG is nothing but foreground. MySQL the background layer there are no in the check check and the BG. फोर ग्रउंड रन अच्छे एफ जी सो कंप्लीट दी एग्जिट अवाले फॉर्वर्ड स्लाश क्यू सारी स्लाश क्यू अन बाय सो पर्मेट एग्जिट अवाले फॉर्वर्ड स्लाश क्यू ओके सो नौ सो नौ टू लागिन अवर् मैस्यूल डेटा बेस सो प्रीवियली वी आर्ड इन टू रूट यूजर So now I log into. Now I log into admin user. Okay, so the command is same. So the command is same. So the command is my SQL space hyphen u. My SQL space hyphen u space. So the user name is admin. My SQL space hyphen Use space the username is admin space iphone h iphone h is nothing but our database host private private host address so our host address is in this particular location first i select a db and copy that db server private ip so this is our db server private ip so now i copy this and paste it on this location space iphone p If I'm busy, nothing but password. Okay, so the next copy this. Must so clear my screen. Right click, enter, and enter password. The password is admin at the rate one two three. Now I type admin at the rate one two three. Password display over there. Hunger for that. Okay, enter. So here are 2003 can't connect to MySQL server on 10.0.1.1.4. So we are getting error. And connect out later. We have successfully created user and database. User and database on by using some commands, but we can't connect. So why? So again back to my documentation. So this is the documentation. Mm. 
in this documentation we have some procedure yeah so this is the procedure so how to allow remote access to mysql so the command is so mysql configuration is available uh, configuration is available in this particular directory the directory is in etc mysql mysql.config.d slash on mysql id.config that is the file so each and every configuration is available in this particular file that file is in this particular directory so now i open this directory by using nano editor okay so now i copy this and right click so this is the entire configuration about mysqld okay so in this navigate to this line that begins with the bind address direct to it will look like as this so this okay so now i search control w is the search okay. bind hyphen address enter Yeah, so the, by default, this value is set to 127001. 127001. Okay, so that's fine. So, meaning uh, that server will only look for local connections. You will need to change this direct to, to reference an external IP address. For the purpose of troubleshooting, you could set this direct to, to wildcard IP address either star. Uh, uh, comma double colon comma or zero 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 so hold on so now to change this value so by default we have one twenty seven zero zero one now I change this to all zeros zero 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 zero, zero the next and done so the next control w again bind address again control w so now check any bind values is there or not perfect so we have only one bind address is there so bind address okay so the next is here this will control x y and enter so now we are successfully changed bind address value. So the next command is sudo system control restart mysql. So now I restart system control mysql. Please uh, mute your. Okay, so now I copy uh, this command sudo system control restart my HP. again right click and enter. Yeah, so sudo so, uh, restart it successfully again back to my again back to my console. Now I run the same command again. So the command is mysql space hyphen u space admin space hyphen h space hyphen p enter the password is admin at the rate one two three and enter yeah so now it is working so now we are in our own database so previously we are in a uh, root database now we are in our own database so our own database name is admin so this is, uh, this is our own database okay so please mute your mix here so now we are in our own database okay so if you want to exit uh, from this you just type forward slash q and enter so again we want to we are moving on to our own database by using this command mysql space iphone u iphone u is nothing but username so the username is admin admin iphone h is nothing but host address host address is nothing but the, our instance 
our instance private IP. So this is our DB server private IP. 10014 10014 hyphen p hyphen p is nothing but port not password port and enter so enter password our password is admin at the rate one two three and enter yeah so now we are successfully logged into our sql port. okay Please mute your mics. So any doubts up to now you can ask me. Any doubts? The next uh, next uh, next thing is uh, I open web server on Putty. So we already done Redis and DB servers. So the next modification on web server. So now I select web server and copy that web server IP before public IP. I'll take a Putty. Shubhashini, who is Shubhashini? Shubhashini, please mute your mic. Okay, fine. Okay, so the next uh, open um, web server on Putty. So this is our web server private public IP. Now I copy that IP address and take a Putty. So host name. Shall operate the SSH authentications browse. So our key is in desktop. That key pair, key pair is project underscore. Final, I think final underscore project, right? Final underscore project one dot pp and click on open. So, Vashni, okay so unable to load key file again again log into one more time new session control v low bit processes authentications and browse or ppk or ppk is in desktop so that file name is final underscore project one dot pp can open Again, open. Yeah, so now login as Ubuntu. So then right click on white border, change settings, appearance, change 16 and bold, and colors. Okay, so white color uh, font is white color font is a radius instance, yellow color font is database instance, and pink color uh, font is application instance. Okay, so now we are in Ubuntu user. So now I convert uh, into root by using sudo space su space iPhone. So the next to clear my screen by using clear command. So the next update our instance by using sudo app update so 
So now our instance is updating state. It will take time. We are done. So the next upgrade our instance. Should I have to get upgrade? Yes. We already done update. So now we are we are in upgrade command. Okay. So while deploying uh, any web application on web server, we need uh, some services. So the service name is Apache 2 or Nginx. So without Apache 2 and Nginx, we can't uh, deploy any web application on web server. We have web server instance, not web server, web server instance. Okay. So our web server instance is, is this one. So without Apache, we can't upload or we can't uh, download any website on this particular web server instance. So that we are installing, we are installing Apache 2 on web server putty. So the command is sudo first I clear my screen. So the command is sudo apt apt get install sudo apt get install php. So actually our web application uh, will be designed by php. Okay. So web server means web server is nothing but this one like a Facebook, Gmail, WhatsApp. Okay, can this one? Prati pages, so prati dynamic or static pages. Then web servers or application servers. What we need to design? Yes, sir. Mano, mano ke PHP to design chiyo chhu, HTML to design chiyo chhu. Alagi different different programming languages to design chiyo chhu. But mano deploy chhu isto na project achi PHP format londe. So that I am using PHP. Space Apache 2. Apache 2 is the web server. And enter. So, do you want to continue? Yes, and enter. Yeah, so Apache 2 is done. So now check whether it is installed or not. So now I copy that web server IP and paste it on new browser and enter. Yeah, so Apache 2 Ubuntu default pages successfully installed my web server instance. So now we are getting out. Okay. So you can observe uh, the fourth line. Replace this file located at where www.html slash index.html. Actually, this is the static page. So this static page is in, is in this particular location. The location is where www.html and this particular file name is index.html. So if you want to host your own website, you just move on to this directory and replace, replace your file in this location. So that's simple. Okay. So again back. So here we have some documentation is there. So this is the model setup. Now, now we deploy model configuration. So this is the model configuration link. So now I copy the this link and paste it on charts. Control V and it. Please refer this link. Okay. Again, take a new browser window and control V and enter. So set step by step installation guide for Ubuntu model configuration. Okay, so this is the model configuration. So first install we are Ubuntu. We already done uh, Ubuntu installation. So the next install Apache 2 MySQL and PHP. We already done Apache 2 and MySQL and PHP. Okay, so the next install. So some commands so php extensions so install additional softwares on php and etc okay so install 
PHP configurations. So now I copy this link. So, uh, so this is the additional PHP configurations. So the app install. So this is the command. Now I copy this and paste it on Notepad. So you can observe the children. Pratidani ki PHP 7.4. PHP 7.4 is nothing but PHP 7.4 version. Okay. So now we have uh, uh, some 8.4 or something. So this is the older version. So that I am removing 7.4 in each and every location. 7.4 PC remove shade on a advantage in the latest PHP version then by default the automatically install is good in the 7.4 command low and the any line which is the movement after either the 7.4 version under the animal for me install this a lot of money latest quality so so that I am removing 7.4 in this particular command Okay, so the next copy this and paste it on pink palette color put and enter. Yeah, so do you want to continue? Yes, and enter. now we are done each and every configuration so the next uh, deployment model we have any on deployment okay so we will discuss on tomorrow and the time is already 8 27 so any doubts up to now you can answer so in this lab we already done redis configuration mysql configuration and php configuration so tomorrow uh, one thing tomorrow we don't have any session so we'll meet on uh, day after tomorrow i mean thursday so same time 6 30 to recording sessions in uh, upload just not an issue okay okay okay